Welcome to Elite Weapon Shipment. I've done a video for this quest before, but I wanted to do another one just to really emphasize the importance of farming it for the Mysterious Bobble. It's a piece of gear that comes from the end chess here. If you're not familiar with that piece of loot, it's a trinket clicky that uh, basically is like a one major mana pot per rest. Totally awesome. Um, drop rate, maybe something along the lines of Gibber's Blade, maybe a little bit better, maybe something like 5%. Uh, if you keep farming this quest, you will get it. I know there's people out there that have farmed this, you know, a shit zillion times and haven't pulled it yet, but unless your luck is really, really bad, then, you know, if you keep farming it, you will get it. It also has Wizardry 6, uh, so 150 spell points, but, you know, as a level 18 piece of gear, it's a lot better than that. You know, you, this isn't something you'd want to wear. You know, it's, you want it for the clicky. So farm this quest for your Mysterious Bobble. It's a really important, awesome piece of loot for really any blue bar. Okay. So, level 20. Big changes. Epic levels. Didn't do a level 19 quest because just not... Nothing really exciting happening at level 19. But 20, you know, 20 is a big level. Let's take a look at it. A lot of the same gear that I used in, in when I was doing the Paladin lives, you know. I did all those lives. So we got the uh, Concordant Opposition Goggles still. That's the same as last video. Now we've got the Epic Red Dragon Plate Armor, the heavy stuff. This is from, you know, the Von Six Raid. This is not the Cormerian stuff, that level 22 or 23 armor. I forget which, which it is. But, uh, yeah, this comes from the, the Vault of Night chain. And this is going to be the best heavy armor that a, a druid could wear at this level. Uh, really tough to farm though because the shard is really really rare so you know if you don't have that as an option then just keep wearing your heavy blue at this point until you get your epic heavy blue or your flawless heavy blue. This is a nice set of armor. Uh, it's just got you know it's got high armor, high armor bonus couple slots. Fire lore and combustion though is redundant from the Cloak of Flames. In fact, Cloak of Flames is a little bit better. Epic Braces of Wind slotted up with Intimidate 11, Spellcraft 11, awesome awesome item. Uh, crafted, uh, I'd put Enchantment Save 6, Blindness Immunity on there just because I could. Uh, False Life 30 in the green slot. Evocation boots of fire absorption 33% probably should have like conjuration focus because evocation is redundant with my shield. I'll mention that in a minute. I didn't really want to recraft it though just because the fire absorption requires some, I don't want to say rare ingredients, but ingredients are a little bit more of a pain to, to get and I don't have a ton of them so I just, I left it. It's no big deal. Purple Dragon Gauntlets. This commendations of uh, the PDK commendation turn in in Evening Star. I think there's just like three or five commendations. Really nice gloves for level 20 for you know really any class. I mean you've got Strength 7, Insightful Con 2, 60 Heal Amp. I mean who doesn't love that? Guardian's Ring. You know you could probably find random gen loot at this level range that's just as good or probably better. Uh, slotted up with strength 6, that is redundant. Uh, sheltering 24, very nice. Uh, PRR and MRR. Got, uh, this is, oh, this would have been new since last video. Con 8, False Life 31. Actually, this is False Life's redundant. I should, <laughs> I need to recraft this thing. Uh, Alright, so the Epic Cloak of Flames slotted up with Fat Sapphire, Good Luck, Plus 2, Diamond of Christmas 6. Uh, this has got Combustion 90, Fire Lore 16%, Heightened Awareness 4, it's 4 more AC. This is an awesome item for, for a lot of different tunes, especially if you're doing fire damage. Got the Shamanic Fetish now, I didn't need what was on the trinket that I crafted before. I'm not using the wall of wood anymore, so devotion 72 is really nice. Radiant 72 is nice. I don't have like a general potency item anymore, so you know I need to have everything covered, which pretty much do. 
Yeah, I could do. Master's Gift slotted. My beloved Torque. And the Green Steel Mineral 2 Helmet. Plus 45 hit points. Heavy 4. Protection 5. Uh, for the weapon, I'm using Epic Kron's X Cruelty, so I was using that during my Paladin lives, but I have replaced the red slot with a Ruby of Glaciation 90. This is a all-chemical shield. This is crafted out of the, you know, Master Artificer and Lord of Blades raid stuff. And you, there is an option to make it crystal, so druids can use it since it's crystal. Not As long as it's not metal, druid can use it. And you can, you know, if you're not familiar with alchemical crafting, there are three different tiers, and you can configure it in a bunch of different ways. So I'm just going to start at the top. Uh, it's got a greater freeze clicky, plus 20 alchemical bonus, cold spell power, last three minutes. It's really nice. I don't have to lug around a bunch of pots. Um, efficient meta magic maximize 2 is really nice. Evocation focus 2. Arcane augmentation 9. That increases the cast level of first through ninth level sorcerer and wizard spells by two probably not working as intended but is functioning on my firewall and ice storm uh, ice and kinetic lore sixteen percent corrosion and impulse ninety earth grab guard so a really cool little toy to have you know if you it's this is you know if you, you, this is not an option that you can just you know whip together if you don't have a bunch of spirits from Lord of Blades. So you know just use your heroic wall of wood, and then you know at 22 get your epic normal wall of wood. It's fine. This is just something I could make, so I did. And this is my you know pride and joy tune. So so I did it. On the feet side, I got rid of Extend Spell, which I really liked for, you know, Body of the Sun and longer buffs too. But I'm not using Body of the Sun so much anymore. You know, I'm switching. I'm pretty much, pretty much just using Water Elemental form now. Now that I've moved, you know, past all the heroic stuff. Well, I guess this is this is heroic. But once you get to Amrath, you know, Fire stuff isn't going to help you anymore. So get rid of Extend Spell. Picked up Spell Focus evocation so I think at this point everything you know is just like I have in my build post one of the things I didn't mention before one of the benefits of keeping the wizard level is that you get the bonus level one wizard feat okay and because I'm not human human starts with a bonus feat and I'm not human anymore so I lost that but I gained it back because of that level of wizard so that's one advantage of keeping the one wizard level in addition to you know plenty of other benefits want to mention some spells too. So only having 19 levels of druid, I'm missing a first level spell, it's irrelevant. More significantly, I'm missing an 8th and ninth level spell. So what I chose to forego was ice flowers for the level 8 spell. That's a spell that I don't use very often, so I just I'm not going to miss it. If you like that spell, it would be very easy just to swap it out for fires of purity. That's a weapon buff that I like to cast on my party members. You know, I like to buff others. That's just me. You don't want to cast Fires of Purity on yourself, though, because it would overwrite, you know, if you're using Crown of Summer from your Enhancement Tree. Let me pull that up. So this has a 2d6 light effect on your weapon, but you can't put Fires of Purity on that same weapon and overwrite that. So if you're using Crown of Summer, don't use Fires of Purity on yourself. So, like I said, very easy to just get rid of that. Use Ice Flowers if you like it. I don't find Ice Flowers doing that much damage. One of the things that's nice about it, though, is it's both cold and piercing damage, the piercing is untyped. Druids don't have a lot of spells that do untyped damage. I mean, you have like Ice Storm, Ice Flowers, and I think it's like Thorn something. <laughs> Splinter Bolt. <laughs> Deals 46 piercing damage, so. I think those are the only ones that do untyped damage that druids have. And then for the ninth level spell, I got rid of Anger of the Noonday Sun, which is the impaired cousin of Mantle Icy Soul. Mantle Icy Soul, totally awesome. You need to have this on you at all times. You probably know this, but I come across people once in a while that are like, oh, you know, and 
you know, if you're a caster druid, you want to be in elemental form all the time, period. There's so many awesome benefits from being in elemental form. I emphasized that in an earlier video. Saying it again, Mantle Icy Soul for the Cold Druid, for the Water Elemental Form, on all the time, okay? Any mobs that are affected by your cold spells get a 25% penalty to movement speed, 10% penalty to attack speed, minus 4 penalty to reflex and fortitude save, and I want to say that what's really important about that, especially important, is that the minus 4 penalty to reflex save means they're more likely to get hit by your earthquake. Earthquake is a reflex save. So, I mean, it's just huge. Mental Ice Seal is so huge. But then there's sort of like this this counterpart to it for the for the fire elemental form, and it's called Anger of the Noonday Sun, which is like the dumbest thing ever. 2% <laughs> fortification penalty and minus 5 penalty to fire resistance. whoop de frickin' do. So that was an easy one to lose. I have mentioned before in my videos that I, ha I half suspect that, you know, when they were programming this stuff, they had a list of things that were supposed to be on Anger of the Noonday Sun, and a list of things that were supposed to be on Man of the Icy Soul, and some some programmer like spilled coffee and couldn't read the note and like put most of the stuff on Man of the Icy Soul, <laughs> and, and, and then you know only had the two lame things on Anger. It just kind of seems like you know there's so much with Man of the Icy Soul. It just kind of seems like, you know, maybe the penalty to attack speed or maybe the penalty to fortitude saves was supposed to be on Anger of the Noonday. I don't know. Whatever. It is what it is. Mantle Icy Soul, totally awesome. Anger of the Noonday Sun, really stupid. Alright. Where else are we? Long introduction because it's a big level. Epic Destiny. Unyielding Sentinel. That is my Epic Destiny of choice. Yes, you can do more casting DPS and other Epic Destinies. I certainly don't miss it. I used to run in those other destinies when I, you know, first started doing Druid, and for a long time until I started really focusing on the tanky side of this build. Um, you know, I just don't miss the extra casting DB, and that's me. You know, you can do what you want. I like the survivability. So this is exactly the way I have it set up in my build post in terms of the actual epic destiny, the twists. Uh, from the salad, from the twisting salad bar, I chose energy burst. I mean, that's totally awesome. You know, that, to me, that's a must. Empyrean magic. I mean, if you include produce flame, and in just that alone, you know, one of the few healing spells you're throwing here and there, if you include produce flame in your normal attack routine, you can keep Empyrean magic up. You know, maxed out all the time. So that's twenty x twenty universal spell power. 10% critical chance with all spells, huge, giant, giant twist for really any caster that is you know, this procs off of fire, light, and healing spells. So any caster that's doing those, this is a very valuable twist. This is one that I overlooked for a long time, you know, after this is from Divine Crusader, and you know, that's just one I didn't, I didn't really click until I started seeing other people using it and paying more attention to it and gave it a try myself, and I just love it. Co uh, Consecration. This is uh, some, some nice AoE uh, supplemental damage. It does fire and good damage, which is pretty cool. And then I've got Interrogation, which is 5% universal sp or five universal spell power, 1% universal spell critical chance. Now, uh... I'm Epic Completionist, so I have the fourth twist. If you don't have that, that's okay. Uh, you know, there's lots of other things I have listed in my build post that you could twist here. If you don't have, you know, a bunch of past lives and extra mana and spell point clickies and stuff, I mean, you could put like... Well, you could you could put in uh, Rejuvenation Cocoon. That's a nice spell point savings when it comes to healing. It's low-cost healing. You could put... Uh, Eternal f Endless Faith from Exalted Angel gives you plus it's a t plus ten percent spell point bonus. So I mean those are awesome. You know, lots of other twists you could do, but th those are those are two that are pretty significant, uh, especially if you find yourself are a little bit shorter on mana. All right, I think it's time to do the quest. So I was just farting around on YouTube a couple hours ago, and I came across 
you know, this this movie, this like homemade movie. I mean, they put a lot of effort into it. Don't get me wrong, but it's you know, it's a very very low budget movie, and it just I couldn't stop watching it. Laugh my ass off. It was like a role play, like a Dungeons and Dragons tabletop role role playing movie. It was called The Gamer's Dorkness Rising, and I just I watched the whole. It was a full length movie, like an hour and forty five minutes. Just laughed my ass off. It took me a few minutes to get into it, but um, you know I wanted to give it a chance and just totally enjoyed it. So check you can check that out. You know you can watch a movie if you're if you're a <laughs> pen and paper uh, dorky gamer like me, then you will definitely appreciate the humor. It's kind of like in in the in the vein of like if you've seen The Guild, the web series The Guild, which is also really funny if you haven't seen that. You know, it's this group of gamers, and it sort of bounces back and forth between them sitting at the table and and sort of, you know, what they're imagining they're doing in their campaign. It sort of follows this whole module, and <laughs> it's, it's really good. Like I said, it's really it's low budget, you know, but it's if you could get past that, it's it's funny, and I feel like it's really worth the watch. So here you gotta keep, you know, Leela alive. She dies in this part, you auto fail, and then you'll be sad. You know, and she it's easy to lose track of her, you know. Um, it's easy to run ahead, and you know, there's one mob that you didn't see is still back there, you know, pew pewing her, and you run ahead, and before you know it, she's dead. So don't let that happen to you. Keep an eye on her health. So, on the skill point side, I'm definitely regretting my decision to start with an 18 wisdom. I had too many skill points with the 14 intelligence. You know, I was able to max out UMD, and then ha I have like six or eight points in diplomacy just because I was like, hey, what else am I going to do, you know? So, let's take a look at that real quick here. Don't let Leela die. Tw I have 12 ranks in diplomacy, for God's sake. That's. Oh my God. Yeah, total. So as soon as Lesser Hearts go on sale, I'm. I think I'm gonna start with the 20 wisdom. Uh, I don't need all those skill points. And if I if I am not able to max out everything that I want to max out, I mean, I definitely I won't I won't max out UMD. I don't need it. I've got the tomes. You know, I've got the past life stance that gives plus three to all skills. You know, by the time you get level 30, I mean, you, you get so much UMD. Okay, so here you got the shrine, and you can save it for later. But here's the thing. There has to be someone alive in this, like, final zone right here. So you can't just leave here and go use it. There has to be someone alive here. And you can't use your wolf like I mistakenly did earlier today when I did a, a video and then I failed because when you get done resting your wolf is automatically called to you so I had my wolf parked up in a you know up in the cave up there and then like as soon as I get done resting boom so that sucked so like I literally did a whole video up to this point actually halfway through the end fight <laughs> and then I failed uh, but you can use <laughs> I think I did the same thing when I made the video a while ago on my other druid uh, you can use, you know, hireling. 
you can use your panther or your owl bear. So I'm going to show you how to do that if you are not familiar with this. Also, if you have are just coming back from a long break from the game, they changed the way this end fight works. And they changed it for the better. It's more fun. Uh, and it's, it's not as much of a pain in the ass. So once you kill this first group here, Layla is, can no longer be damaged. It used to be the case before where you had to guard her. Like she could die up until she was finished doing her little ritual thingy. Now she's protected by a force field. You don't even have to worry about her. Okay? It's just... Now, and then now, it, I can't even remember how it used to work, but now it's just like waves, like huge numbers of mobs. It's, it, it's fun. I mean, I like large numbers of mobs, you know, unless it's, you know, creeping death. And it's just all, you know, kobolds with a shit zillion hit points and, and uh, oozes. That sucks. So I'm just going to burn up my spell points here, because I do have that shrine. I'm going to get all these guys with creeping coal, until i got no spell points left. And then I'm going to pull out my panther, I'm going to go use that shrine. What's cool here too, you know, if you are short on mana, you know, you, if you got the torque, you could just sit here and shield block, right? And you're going to proc spell points. I mean, you're going to get your whole mana bar back with that torque. But they can't even hit me. So if you have this, <laughs> and I want to show you something here. 161 armor class. That's fully buffed. But I'm showing you now because when I showed this screen earlier, it said like 140. Um, I don't know why it just dropped to 160. But I don't know why it was at 161, actually. Because 160 is where I thought it should have been. 148 PR, I think that's pretty damn good for a druid for level 20. But I do want to, you know, really want to emphasize, you know, I've got like something like 36 PRR from past lives and something like 36 extra AC at this point, just, you know, from past lives too. So, you know, if you know I have all those past lives, you, you can still get really good AC, but, you know, past lives are one of the reasons why my AC is, I feel really high. For level 20 for a druid. So these archers, you know, are going to save for a lot of my spells, but creeping cold, greater creeping cold, no save. They're taking it all. We throw an ice storm there. Ice storm is another spell, no save. Beautiful spell, no save. Produce flame, no save too. So evasion mobs, they're taking it. So archers, you can pew pew them down, which is a good thing to do because this charges up impuring magic. So you know, use produce flame to pew pew a mob, get your impuring magic. You can see I got it up to ten stacks now. Now I can get back to business. Back to business. Blown up, sir. And you can do, you know, you can do the whole kit and caboodle now. I mean, it, I don't, it's not really necessary here, but you know, earthquake, ice storm, sleet storm, storm of vengeance, 
Let's just throw the Consecration on there for good measure. Yes, it will hurt the Hellhounds too, immune to fire, but they will take the good damage. I mean, this right here is just about an unstoppable combination. I mean, with the Mantle Icy Soul on there, you throw your own little personal hurricane, it's so freaking awesome. I love it. But at the, you know, at this level, or at least in this quest, it's just not necessary to do the whole thing. Sleet Storm. I'm a big advocate of Sleet Storm. It can be one of the most irritating spells in the game, I understand that. But here's the thing. You give your party freedom of movement and learn to love it, okay? Druids are the only class in the game to have both Sleet Storm and Freedom of Movement on their spell list. So just give your party Freedom of Movement and learn to love Sleet Storm. It works great. There is no save. It blinds mobs. It makes them move slow. It can make them fall. It's totally awesome. Works on Epic Elites. Again, no save. You know, when nothing else works, Sleet Storm can still work. I'm going to pew pew these guys with some produced flamage. I'm going to get my Imperium magic up. Floating remnant. Remnant over there. So, Let's not push it to the limit. Push it to the limit. Hey, that's, that's a song by Rick Ross. I think it's by Rick Ross. It's a good song. Push it to the limit. Yeah, it's Rick Ross. Rouse. Okay, so we're going to come up here. You're not going to miss the jump like I did, though. Come up here. Pull your panther out of your pants, the sex panther. And then <laughs> stick him on passive. Park him. Okay? He can't get hit, but watch his health bar. Just in case, you know, something teleports up there or something. Okay? And, you know, park yourself right about here. Watch the health bar. If he starts getting hit for some reason, he's about to die, just quickly click on the cave. You can, right here from the, from the resting position, you can click on the cave, it'll take you right back out. But we're good to go. Because those hellhounds aren't getting up there to our panther. It's called Sex Panther by Odeon. It's illegal in nine countries. And let's get the uh, protection from evil. It's only five minutes, but we need that for the succubi, which you're gonna like, you know, command me or whatever. Alright. We're going to dismiss the panther. So that's how you, you you save the shrine. Just keep something alive in the zone, and right up there in that cave is a great spot to hide your little panther, or your owl bear, or your hireling. Pew this archer, produce flame again so we can get back to business with the Empyrean magic. Empyrean magic is a go.
that spell with a little like triple yin yang looking kind of white circle above their head. Now here I'll hit it again. That's that's um, word of balance, and it, you can see it ticked twice there. And that spell it, it it does it can do it can tick twice, and it's based on the alignment of the target, and it it's it's how many steps away they are from neutrality. So. You know, if they're like, you know, chaotic neutral, the chaotic is one step away, the neutral is on target though, so that's just one step away from true neutrality, so they would tick once. But if they were like chaotic evil, the chaotic is a step away, the evil is a step away, so it would tick twice. So I just hit him for over 2,000 damage with it, that was an SLA. There, there's the regular version again about 2,000 damage so it's a nice spell this is the really the only spell that I advocate for that has a spell penetration check and like I've said before it's not worth investing in spell penetration because it's the only spell you know and it's it's a nice little spell but just you know use it generally speaking as part of your your regular attack routine with your SLAs if it hits great if it doesn't who cares you know it's like two spell points to cast it or something um, I do have the regular version loaded up though. You know, if I want a mana dump. It's not the kind of spell you're gonna rely on though. So like it's not, you know again, you don't want to invest in resources in trying to make that spell better or you know, or spell penetration. Yeah, the one other spell that you have is finger of death. Like I mentioned earlier in the series, don't just don't even do it. Don't even go there on a druid. It's 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 just not worth it, you know. It can be made effective in heroic levels, but it's not going to be effective in epic on a druid. So you don't even get in the habit of using it on your druid. You know, unless you, if you were just knocking out a druid past life and you're just going to 20, fine, do whatever you want. But you know, if you're going to 30, just don't even get in the habit of it, because then you're going to have to get in the habit of not using it. And again, it's just a complete waste of time. You don't want to invest in Necro on a Druid. You don't want to invest in Spell Penetration on a Druid. Look, <laughs> look at all these girls just hanging out. Just having a little, a little sit down. <laughs> We've got to hit ourselves with the... protection from evil again. Massive arcane spell of failure. There we go. Today I'm going to upload the cry for help, the epic elite cry for help that I did in that one. The mic clipping is so bad in the beginning of it. Oh, it was just, I almost just wanted to just delete the whole thing and not even put it up, but you know, it's part of the series and, you know, the clipping does really, it, it, it's really, um, it's not as bad after the eight minute mark, but all oh, between like minute two and eight, it's harsh. And then uh, one video after that that has a little bit of clipping, and then that should be it. I I think what happens is like when I go to use certain audio applications that you know it like resets. My my, my gain was at a hundred in Windows. What the hell it was doing there? I think like maybe when like when I used Skype last time or something like when I was on DDO Cast that maybe you know, somehow. Like I said, you run certain programs, it just wants to take control of your audio settings.
doing gibbers yesterday with my guild, my guildies, and pulled two gibbers in one run. It's totally awesome. And that's in addition to the j gibbers I captured in that in uh, episode 24. That was awesome. Gibbers is not a myth. It does drop. You just have to be patient. You will get it, I promise you. So we're going to tear this guy up with, with uh, Creeping Cold and, and Greater Creeping Cold. No problem. It's good to keep an examination window open. You know, when you're doing Creeping Cold, Greater Creeping Cold, they do overwrite uh, themselves if you cast it before it expires. So you don't want to overwrite your own Creeping Colds because it's a backloaded spell in that your your biggest damage is ticked at the end. So if you overwrite them with like a couple seconds to go, you're losing out on your biggest damage. So it's I recommend if you're serious about playing Caster Druid, you know, keep learn to play with a you know hotkey examination your examination window and learn to to keep an eye on it. You know, especially, you know, for like, really, it's just for bosses, because that's when you're gonna want to just do it over and over and over. Like for for a lot of trash mobs, you can just hit them once, and it's a fire and forget spell. You're not gonna recast it on them. But twenty eight grand. I don't remember that being that much XP. That's interesting. I thought it was like ten grand. All right, I am not opening the chest because I'm gonna pull some guildies in here to try to get their mysterious bobble. Thanks for watching. If you have questions about my videos, you can respond on YouTube. If you have questions about my build, you can respond in my build post in the DDO uh, forums, the Druid forum. And if you're on Sarlona, you're welcome to send me a tell.